Hey guys, welcome to a new video on a slightly more intuitive explanation of mass points. Okay, so first off, why is mass points so amazing? Well, mass points uses physics in order to greatly simplify some problems, which show up in a bunch of different aspects of geometry. And this makes it really essential in competition math. Mass points problems show up as much as once per competition cycle, and it's basically a free question if you can use it, so it saves a ton of time. Mass points is also not really shown in your regular school geometry curriculum, and it's pretty abstract as geometry goes. As difficult as it is to understand, it is even more rewarding. Also, the explanation I'm going to show you actually makes more sense than the conventional one I've seen, at least in my opinion. Before we start, let's just see what mass points does. On a higher level, mass points basically gives you this. If you have a triangle and you have points from the vertices to the other sides of the triangle, then you get information on the ratios between all of these lengths. Okay, so now let's get into it. First, let's think about mass. More specifically, the center of mass, which is basically like a weighted average. We'll explain this with an example. Let's say we have two points, A and B, and A is twice as heavy as B. Where would their center of mass be? Well, let's just notice some things here. Let's call the center of mass P. First of all, P has to lie on the line AB because it's between A and B. Second, P is going to be closer to the heavier point. How much closer? Well, in our example, A weighs twice as much as B. Both A and B are trying to pull P into their direction, but A's pull is twice as strong because A has twice the mass. This means that P is twice as close as A as it is to B, or the ratio AP to PB is one to two. In a more generalized form, the ratio of the length of AP to PB is equal to the mass of B to the mass of A. In this example, the mass of B is 1 and the mass of A is 2, so their ratio is 1 to 2, which is the same as the 1 to 2 ratio of AP to PB. It's easy to get confused by the order here. If you do, just remember that P is always going to be closer to the heavier point. Another thing to notice is that if we think of P as its own point, which is the sum of A and B, then the, ma then the mass of P is going to be the mass of A plus the mass of B. In order to test your understanding, let's try a simple problem with this. The center of mass of A and B is P. The ratio of AP to PB is 3 to 2. P has a mass of 10. What are the masses of A and B? Okay, so please pause this video for a moment to try this. So here's the solution. Well, in mass points, we can write of a, um, the mass of a point right before the letter. So we can write 10p. Remember this notation because we'll use it again. We want the ratio of the masses of A to B to be 2 to 3, since AP to PB is 3 to 2, and this goes to, back to what we showed in the previous slide. So we have two numbers with a ratio 2 to 3 with a sum of 10. And we could find these numbers algebraically, but it's easier to just try some numbers and find that A has a mass of 4 and B has a mass of 6. The ratio 4 to 6 is 2 to 3, so this example works. Okay, so now we have to actually use this for something with geometry. And in order to make this actually interesting, let's use three points instead of two. Okay, so let's just say the plus symbol means center of mass, because the center of mass of two points is like adding them. So in this case with three points, we have that P is the center of mass of A, B, and C. 
F is the center of mass of A and B. D is the center of mass of B and C. And E is the center of mass of A and C. Now, mass points has this important property called associativity, which means that if you group some of the centers and do those first, then you will still get the same result in the end. This is a fancy way of saying that no matter how you put the parentheses, you're still going to get the same center of mass in the end. So this means that if you first find the center of A and B, which is F, and then you find the center of that with C, then the resulting point is the same as the center of mass of A, B, and C. So the center of mass of F and C is P, of B and E is P, and of A and D is P. Remembering that the center of mass of two points lies on the line between them, we see that A, D, B, E, and C, F all intersect at P. And you may have seen this before as concurrent Chevians. Now let's use this knowledge to do an actual problem. We are, we're given the information that AF to FB is 2 to 1, and BD to DC is 3 to 2. We are asked to find the ratio AP to PD. Let's start by assigning some masses. Masses don't need to be integers, but it's easier if they are. So let's try to make them integers. B has to weigh twice as much as A. So let's make B2 and A1. The ratio of B, the ratio of B to C is 2 to 3 because their lengths are 3 to 2. So C will have a mass of 3. Now the mass of D is B plus C. So D has a mass of 5. P is the center of mass of A and D. The ratio of the masses A and D is a ratio of 1 to 5. This means that the ratio of the lengths AP to PD is 5 to 1. And that is our answer. So here's the three-step process to using mass points. First, you assign a weight. Next, you use that to find the other weights using the given ratios, and finally, you find the desired ratio. Be warned, many mass points problems are hidden. A lot of problems use mass points as one step in a larger process. So what is mass points important for? Well, here are some examples of its uses. Since it looks at concurrent Chevians, we can use it to prove that the me three medians intersect at one point, which you may know, know as the centroid. If you don't know, medians are the lines from each point to the midpoint of the opposite side. We can do this by looking, by first drawing two of the medians, so like this and this. And then looking at the line that passes through their intersection point, which would be this line. We will prove that this blue line turns out to be a median as well. There isn't time to cover the exact proof here, but it is trivial by mass points. The same logic can be applied to prove that angle bisectors intersect, which proves the existence of an in-circle. This process can be generalized to prove Chevis theorem. Mass points can be generalized to barycentric coordinates. It can be used indirectly for a plethora of problems used in competitions. Remember that mass points isn't necessarily on a triangle, but it could be used with four points as well, and can be hidden in all sorts of geometry problems. That's all we have time for today, but there's some more info and more uses of mass points in the description. If you enjoyed this, please like and subscribe so that I can make more videos. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.